Welcome to the Great Coaches Podcast. To me, being perfect is not about that scoreboard out there. This is a chance of a lifetime. When you can understand the person, you can then work towards a common goal. We are all on the same team. Now you roll and do it to the best of your ability. Focus on the fundamentals. We've gone over time and time again. Your defense has got to be better. Leave no doubt tonight. Great moments are born from great opportunity. My name is Paul Barnett, and you are listening to The Great Coaches Podcast, where we explore leadership through the lens of high-performance sport by interviewing great coaches from around the world to try and find ideas to help all of us be better leaders. Our great coach on this episode is Dame Nolene Todua. Nolene is a New Zealand international netball coach and former representative player who is currently head coach of the New Zealand national team, the Silver Ferns. As a player, Nolene won a silver medal at the 1998 Commonwealth Games and a bronze medal at the 1995 Netball World Championships. From 2002 to 2013, she was the head coach of the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, leading them to championships in 2005, 2006 and 2012. In 2017 and 2018, she coached the Sunshine Coast Lightning to -to back-to-back premierships in the Australian Suncorp Super Netball League. Then in 2019, she famously led New Zealand to victory at the World Cup. Nolene has great energy, which you will hear in this interview as she discusses the way she approaches learning and development, strategy and connecting with people's sense of motivation. Some of the other key highlights for me were how she believes the great coaches are able to mobilise people and create an environment where people keep wanting to come back. The importance of having strategic drivers that will propel the vision you have for the club or team. The importance of succession planning and providing the right experiences to everyone in the team so that they grow. And the story she shares about her daughter's experience of not getting on court for the team she played for and how this illustrates the way that Nolene approaches learning and helping people reach their potential. It was a great conversation with Nolene and I hope you enjoy it as much as we did too. And just before we go to the interview, if you want to discover more exclusive content, you can head over to our website, thegreatcoachespodcast.com, where you will find details about our newsletter, our interview library, and our insights database. And now, please enjoy our interview with Nolene Todua. You're listening to The Great Coaches Podcast. Nolene Todua, good morning, my time, and good evening your time and welcome to the great coaches podcast yeah look thank you for having me paul i know it seems a long time since you first connected with me on linkedin and i'm not a maestro on that sort of website so really good to be here and i'm really good i'm really happy to speak to you nolene i want to start by just name checking a couple of well very good coaches if not great that you've had the pleasure of working with this ruth aitken Yvonne Willering, and of course, Sir Gordon Titchens. And I'm sure, uh, given the elite nature of New Zealand sport, you've met many others along the way as well. But I guess from this perspective, I'd like to start by asking you, what do you think the great coaches do differently that sets them apart? Yeah, I think it's that's always an interesting question. And um, I feel that there's not a one-size-fits-all that's probably something that I've learned along the way that, you know, I've grown up in uh, like the old school, you know, but authoritative, uh, authoritarian sort of approach pretty much um, don't say nothing um, and do everything that I say and have, I mean, that's probably maybe my generation as well with my parents and society and to be honest, what's expected. Um, So as it's gone along, I've understood or uh, been more aware that individuals have their own way and their own swagger or what they believe in. And I've come to realise that there's no good or bads, there's no positive, but I think at the end it's how you can mobilise people, uh, irrelevant of it being performance or being sport, in any industry that you're working with and being able to create an environment that's positive, that people belong, that they want to come back and they grow and develop. 
And I think also that they know that they can contribute um, to moving forward. So I think all those coaches that I've um, uh, shared my knowledge with or pinched um, some stuff from them, I've been able to fill my own back pocket uh, with some of those positives, but also linked it into my own flavour as to how I work with people. And I think that's been probably the common theme is the the coaches or the leaders is that you know you know what they do well and you know areas that they are not strong in, but also they're so passionate in their own values and how they're going to work with people. And I think that's apparent with all the with all the coaches or leaders that I work with. Nolene, was there a person or event in your past that triggered in you this desire to, to coach? Um, no, I fell on coaching um, and I was... Um, in the first couple of years, I was still coming out of playing. So, you know, we talk a lot about transitioning from an athlete, a senior athlete, to what's going to happen next in your life. So um, I fell upon it through Ruth Aitken at the time, who was with Magic, which was a club that I was with, but also she got appointed the New Zealand coach for the Silver Ferns. So if I'm going to be honest, it wasn't a career option that I would yeah I fell upon coaching um, and I still find it difficult today <laughs> so Nolan talking about the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic you you said that you took them over and you had well you had a little bit of success because you had the 2005 2006 and 2012 championship in fact they played in 11 consecutive final series and I wanted to final series and I wanted to ask you what did this teach you about the core elements needed to sustain high performance over a longer period of time look that's a really good question just perspective um being really clear about what your strategic what I always think is your strategic drivers um you know you can work but I think sustainable performance or success is really important, uh, not only to your longevity as a coach, but also ensuring that um, the club and the team moves forward and you're always in contention for premiership or, or uh, you know, worlds or whatever it may be. So I think from a coach's perspective, having clear strategic drivers is really important more an overview of um, or a vision of what you're wanting in your team, in your club, and how you're going to contribute to that. Um, for example, I suppose I'm really keen on, on people. Uh, that's a massive driver for me. Um, yes, we are athletes or we are support staff, but we are people first. Um, I think uh, around human capability and potential is really exciting. Um, sometimes I feel, and I've done it in myself, you know, I've put lids on people, um, but haven't probably had a skill set to um, motivate or influence or drive what could be possible. And I think there's so many examples of sports or teams that have risen from the ashes. And that's because you've you've got people amongst uh, a club or a team that are driven to succeed or perform and work together. Um, so people's really important. And I think also when you are working with people, you're working relationships, you're working communication, and you're working integration. So over in New Zealand uh, or here, you know, we only have so much resources. So it's how we can work the different groups together. Um, appeasing, I suppose, that we are meeting KPIs or uh, each group is ticking off the boxes. But how I see it is having that holistic approach that um, you, everyone's moving forward to success, whatever that, that may be. I think that's really important. Uh, performance, which is what we're in, um, how you keep ahead of the opposition. Uh, so to some degree, innovation and research is really important. Tracking uh, or reviewing what you've done 
and how you can make that better out on court in the training field, what that means in regards to data and stats. Um, and for us as well, another key component is systems, you know, succession planning, um, you know, our window as an athlete or as a coach or manager or um, support services is only a small window. So how you ensure that you have that succession planning coming through without skipping a beat, um, how you provide um, what I call experiences to the um, levels underneath. Um, and how you ensure that they grow. So I think those are the three things that really stand out for me. And I think overall, a vision, I've always loved it, I've never been able to get to it, is how you annihilate and dominate. You know, um, it's, it's a vision that I pursue, um, and it goes up and down depending on who you have in your roster um, or who you have that's supporting you. Um, but it's it's something that I I always aspire is how we can be better than the opposition, um, and not only that, but do it in a way that aspires others. Um, and groundbreaking is is also something that comes into my thinking. So I think when you wrap that up and put it into a nice little wee parcel um, that links into a success of success. Um, and then the building blocks that works underneath in regards to the operational stuff to keep on, um, to keep focused and to keep on target. It sounds a little bit more than a wee parcel, but I want to pick up on something you said then around the holistic approach, because I've got this great quote from one of your players, Jeeva Mentor, and she says about you, she's a person who cares a lot for her players. So it's a holistic approach and just the way she makes you feel comfortable, but supported. Now, after reading this, I wondered, is there a danger in making people feel so comfortable that they don't stretch themselves? Yeah, look, that's, and um, I, I agree with that actual question because it's a fine line and it's never one, it's, it's not even on the spectrum, depending on the context of, the situation on the individual and also the environment or the outcome. Um, so if I give you an example, which has got nothing to do with sports, but, well, it has, um, you know, uh, my young daughter at the time was 11 and she played netball and she was within, she was in a tournament and um, this tournament was a five-day jobby. And I asked her on day three, and look, this this is kids, you know, so it's not as if um, the objective was that they were winning the World Games or anything like that. But it gave me an insight actually to my role as a coach and understanding that these different levels. So out of the discussion that I had with her on day three, I actually asked her, have you been on court and she said, no, I haven't been on court. So I said, well, what are you doing? And she said, I sit there, I sit on the side, you know, rah, rah, rah. Um, after day four, she came home and she was a bit um, disappointed, but also she had said that she's never playing netball again. And I said to her, okay, where are you on, where are you in the standings? Something out of 56 teams, right? They were something like 50th. Uh, in this competition. So what it, what there was two things that came out of this for me. Um, I understand, and being a mother as well, I understand that I have a role to care for the people who are in the teams, whether as players or staff. That's, that's what I believe in. And I would never let my kid walk across the road and know that they're going to get run over. I would make sure that they go on the pedestrian crossing, they look at the lights, and then if even if they did walk across the road, I would probably tell them off. But, you know, in a way that what is that learning or what's the lessons that's come out of it and how the next time that you're not going to walk across the road when there's cars. So it's sort of similar to how I... I suppose I approach the way when I'm dealing with people is that we all don't, we're all not um, one way. 
we all learn different. We all have different values and we all have something to contribute. Sometimes it's about how you work with those people or the lessons that need to happen at that moment of time, depending what your outcome is. But also at the end, we're all humans. So we make mistakes, but we also want to know that we're in a in an environment that's going to look after you, but you also know what's next and what you need to know to learn to be better. Um, and I, in my way, and probably through my experience as a player, that's what I would expect as 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 uh, as a player or as an athlete. So it's it's a tough environment, you know. Like selections is tough. You can't tell somebody this is not what you do or you can't do this without giving them the direction or the plan as to how they can be better. Um, and and I that's how I that's how I think it is. I don't feel it's wrapping them up in cotton wool or anything like that, because they will be found out on court, and that is ruthless. And if I, if our athletes or our staff are found out in an external um, situation, that means I haven't done my job. So I think there's a lot of, you're looking at different people, their learning styles, and how you can maximise their potential, but also that they know that they're learning something out of it, and they're going to be better. Um, and that's probably my philosophy. Nolene, in that example, did you extend the desire to teach to the coach of your daughter's team? Did you go and speak to them? Oh, my gosh. I Look, I've got four daughters and none of them don't want me anywhere near a netball court because they know that I, I actually said, do you want me to come down? Do you want me to come down? Do you want me to talk? I'll come and talk and I won't put it in a nasty way. I won't do that because I know once again how tough it is to coach and also with children. I understand that. So um, I'm now allowed to go to the outskirts of my young daughter, the youngest, to be at the gates, but I'm not allowed inside the courts. She doesn't want me there. So um, that's some of the things that I have to respect. But I, I, I am amping to get in there sometimes. So, Nolene, you take the brave step and you move over to Australia and you lead the Sunshine Coast Lightning. And in 2017 and 2018, Lightning hits and you win the Suncorp Super Netball League. And I'm really curious, this uh, this was a big change for you. And I'm wondering what some of the things you did first were when you got to that new team that drove this result. Yeah, um, it was it was probably a good opportunity for me to uh, coach other athletes outside New Zealand. So, um, and the athletes that we had were, I in my mind, were world class. So, it was a good way to test myself, test my routines and my own philosophies and game style as well. Um, the very first thing which I was actually adamant about was that um, for the first two weeks I sat back. Um, I'm really clear about um, what's what's happened in New Zealand in some respects. When coaches go from your own country and you go into another country, it's very easy to take your ways, your style, but uh, not recognising what is already there and the people that you work with. So as I mentioned before, people is really important factor to how I coach so for that to happen I had to sit back and find out how the people worked without me influencing my own ways of a New Zealand way into Australian or at that time into a South African or um, you know we, we were a League of Nations so I wanted to see how how the chemistry worked naturally, uh, who the leaders were, without manipulating, I suppose, the environment. Um, so for the first two weeks, I sat back, uh, especially once we went into training, um, and took lead from at that time um, our assistant coach, which was Kylie, who also picked up the head coach's role with Lightning after I left. Um, it was a good opportunity for me to see how Kylie worked as well. Um, and then um, from a team perspective, I got a feel as to where the gaps were 
and then probably um, how I thought uh, I could establish, I suppose, my own style, my own um, coaching approach, um, and work it fast within the players that I have. I don't know if this is, if you understand it, but I always go back to, you know, like if you had somebody else coming into your house and they don't, you don't know them, they don't know you, and next minute that random person starts telling you what to do. You know, like one, you get your back up. Two, it's like not your house, so you need to respect that. And three, are you working with the people and respecting what's already established? So that was my mentality. And then after that really was working or establishing our values. So our values was not only from a team perspective, but also a club. And that forms the culture of the team. And what I always what I always say, uh, the foundation piece that you hang your hat on. So it draws the common ground, I suppose, and we all connect to that. So those were the probably the two first um, priority areas that I had in my head. And then you start to work the next stages after then. What were the values that you helped establish at, at the Sunshine Lightning? Yeah, once again, um, people. So little wonder why. Uh, people, uh, point of difference and passion. What ended up to be our uh, values and um, our day was, um, or actually two days was with club and also all the staff of the club, but also the players. Um, it was a memorable time. Uh, above and beyond, together we strike. Also linked into our lightning uh, motto and was our mantra. And really pleased that um, those values are still there um, today and still hold strong to not only the team, but also recruitment of staff and provides once again the backbone to Lightning. Um, so I, I think it was a great um, process that we went through, but also, as I say, that it's still strong today, six years after. Nolene, with so many players and staff in a team, how are you able to keep track of who needs what? Look, Paul, sometimes I don't even know my kids' names. Um, <laughs> I can't remember their names. Um, I I suppose the first thing around the staff is, is respecting their, um, their expertise and their knowledge. I think that's really important. Um, I think second thing is making sure that we're all clear what the campaign plan is or the strategic direction and having those discussions as to how everybody feeds into it uh, and being clear on what our roles and responsibilities are. Um, so that's with the team, individuals, and also the staff. So once that piece is done, then pretty much it's just keeping that on track, but also uh, working the environment that we can be flexible and that we do review. Uh, we feel like we review all the time. And out of the reviews that we're, um, what do you call it, looking for those incremental improvements. Um, so... I think once again, it's it's that piece, but also the other piece, the contrast to that is once again, you're working with people and the social element of, of the staff or, or the players, even myself, and having those touch points or those, um, those times that you can celebrate together. Um, and that's really important or reminisce. And you have that human element to the hardness of high performance. Um, and I think once again, when you think of holistic or spiritual, the balance, getting that balance is getting it right, um, adds to the flavor, I think, of of people wanting to come back. Nolene, your father is is also a leader in the community. When you sit down to talk to him about leadership, where do you differ? Well, my father has got very strong um, tribal, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I was going to say obligations or responsibilities or uh, 
um, thoughts uh, around certain things. Um, where we differ, I feel, is sometimes he doesn't listen. <laughs> I can say that, you know, like um, the very, very strong, very old school, very clear, but that's also because I've lived through experiences that have hurt and challenged them and, and they've been made to change something that's ingrained in them. Um, and I suppose once again the angst that goes around that so I, I, I have empathy and I understand to one degree but not fully so I have to be quite empathetic around that because to some degree I only have a perception but not a living memory or experience of it but I also feel around that is that other people can help and you may not know the full answer, but if you give the opportunity for others to be able to contribute and drive certain places or certain pieces, that together you can you can move it faster. And together, everybody contributing will want to be a part of it instead of being isolated from the end. That's probably something that I've uh, that we differ in, but I cannot, to some degree, um, probably have the same passion and drive that he has had over many years, many many years, to be so staunch and tough on his values and what that means. Sometimes, I mean, I've only been like thirty or forty years in, in netball, and I'm tired. You know, and, and sometimes I question myself as to can I keep going and have I got anything else and what's my drive? Whereas I can never question him on that because he would die. He would die to that. And I love that commitment. So that passion and that commitment is something that I will never, that I haven't been able to emulate to the degree that he has. It's interesting that you say you're starting to question your own drive because your ability to motivate or build belief in others is something your players talk about. Because I've got another quote here from Katrina Raw, and she says, she makes you believe you're the best player in the world in your position. And this this was after you famously beat Australia in the World Cup. But I, I wanted to ask you, Nolene, what have you learned about the need to help people, some of, some of whom are already elite performers, the best in their world? What have you learned about helping them build self-belief? I think that's the most exciting thing when you look at human potential and maximizing that. And I'm only thinking about myself as, as you know, and I mean, our sports site or our site goes on about it all the time. When we're rating people, he goes, there's never an eight, nine or 10 because you never can be that, you know, and, and how much more lid that we have to explore and extend our skill sets or our personality or our character. Um, and, and I'm talking about myself, but isn't that a beautiful path to pursue, I suppose, you know, and what that means to the individual, but also our responsibility, especially in national um, honours, is, is how we uphold and drive the next level or the standards so that that level underneath have something to aspire to. So I feel in that whole, it might be a philosophical way of thinking, but I feel we're, we, um, we're under, under, what do you call it? Not underutilized, but our capacity is so small within a short time frame. And to uh, get ourselves to the, uh, hmm, to be able to lift our lid is what I'm, if, is what I say, and 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 the beauty around that to be driven in that way, I think when you work that philosophy and that motivation, it ends up coming from within, um, and the individual's willingness to enter into that space. Um, and I suppose that's probably the environments that we I'd like to create or that we're working in, that at the end, you know, whether you win or lose, and obviously on the sports field, we're um, measured by your win or loss, 
but it doesn't mean that that year will stink or that we weren't successful. So you always want somebody to come out with something, whatever it is. Um, so that drives it drives us moving forward, I think, as as a human race and society and our role in our as our role as athletes, but also in the national program. Nolene, one of the many team building exercises that you've done with your players was to introduce them to a monk who talked about spiritual guidance. But even in this interview today, you've talked a lot about the spiritual side of coaching and, and human endeavor. But you also talk a lot about building this with your athletes, you know, this emotional strength, this ability to keep going. And if someone was listening and they wanted to help their own team build this inner resolve, what are some of the top tips you'd give them? Mm, um. Yeah, that's really it's that's really interesting. It's it's actually quite a hard thing to talk about because it's so contrasting at times. Um, I, I I always think that the human element is really important. Understanding from age to stage. I mean, if you look at a spectrum from developing to national. Uh, to international, to world class, and there's a lot of other stages in between there. But then in those stages, you've got age and stage. Um, you know, you've got a lot of different stages within the phases itself. So understanding that you're actually, once again, working with people. I reckon that's really important. You know, just because you're a high-performance athlete or world-class athlete, it doesn't mean that there's other stuff that, you, one, you can't learn to be better, Two, that they're so in a halo or cotton wool that there's nothing happening in their personal life that won't impact on them as an athlete. Um, and also those stages that stages of learning is really important uh, that you educate um, so that they understand um, and you and that you know that people are on a different spectrum. I think that's really important. Um, I think providing direction, uh, clear what I think is clear strategy and direction so people know where they fit, but also where they're going to. Um, and also knowing that if there, there's going to be speed bumps, um, you know, everybody's life has got the ups and downs, but, but you're going to be cared for, but you should be clear on where you're going to and how you're going there. I, I sort of feel that those are probably the clear things, um, but I also understand that there's a lot in there to unpack. Um, and I think that's the beauty of life, if I'm going to be honest, and, and the beauty of getting the final product when it is successful, not necessarily about the result on the scoreboard, but the success around the pathways that gotten you to that place. And I think that's the most beautiful thing around coaching. The netball New Zealand CEO, Jenny Wiley, called you the best netball coach in the world. Now, you've also got five children and three grandkids. <laughs> I know you're all, I know that you're very close to them because you talk about them all the time. Now, we've never met before today, but it seems to me that you've been able to build a successful life on and off the court. And I'm really curious, Nolene, what advice would you give to other leaders on finding a bit of balance in their life? Mm, two things that come across, um, actually, and one is because my husband, he keeps saying to me, you're so lucky to have me. And as you mentioned, I've got five children. And I reply to him, you're so lucky to have me. Uh, <laughs> that might be the coach in me. Um, um, so definitely having those networks and that supportive partner, husband is massive. Um, I, you know, obviously when you're away, um, it's, the, it's the family that suffer. Not necessarily suffer, but um, it impacts on the family. I feel being a woman as well adds to that because sometimes as well, um, you know, you're talking about even clean, keeping the house clean and those sort of things and cooking and feeding your children and being there for that emotional support um, had been missing 
um, because of my career. But um, so I think that's really important. The second thing is, and I've learned it, it's taken me a long time. And I, uh, I've known it for a long time, but I haven't gone into the stages that I have now over the last maybe five to 10 years, is having that time for myself. Um, nutrition is really important to me and I'm not, I'm not a crazy person on that. Keeping exercise is really important to me, my own health and well-being. Um, I know that when I'm tired or uh, when I'm angry or uh, um, frustrated, my emotions um, are also uh, not consistent. Uh, and that, that impacts not only on the players that I'm working with or the staff, but also home life as well. So I've learned to work a lot on keeping myself consistent in regards to how I roll my approach. And that includes, once again, um, my fitness and my health and well-being and my sleep as well. Um, but I also understand that the role is when we're on, we're on. Um, so I'm not so strict or stringent knowing that it's not a do or die if I don't do these things, that sometimes just getting the timing or moving within schedule is really important and being flexible. So I think those are the three things that I've learned to keep me on top of my game and also um, to ensure that I remain a good person and good coach, but also, I think most importantly, a good partner and wife and, and mother. I think that's really important. Nolan, you've been so generous with your time and you've probably got to go and clean the house, like you just said. <laughs> I might yes. just fit. <laughs> I might just finish with one final uh, question if I could. And I'd, I'd like to preference it with a quote. And you say, it's irrelevant what level you play to. Like all sports, it strengthens communities. It helps to build character and personalities of individuals, and it provides identity as well. It's a great mm. summation, I think, of your whole philosophy on life. But perhaps I could just ask you, in the distant, distant future, when you do hang up that whistle, or maybe it's not so distant given what you said today, I'd like to know, what is the legacy you hope you're going to leave as a leader? Mm. Um. I think there's probably there's a couple. One that the clubs that I have been involved with or the team remain successful, um, and the foundation pieces that are there uh, can be attributed to my time that I've been involved in that club. Um, I think the second thing is that the people who are involved in the team or club um, that they also contribute to society in a positive way and are influencing others and being role models to others. I feel um, in our small window that we learn a lot, we have access to a lot of resources. And as I mentioned, our um, influence that we can have over other communities or other people is massive. So I would like to think that the individuals who come out of the teams that I've been involved understand that they have a role to play in society um, and whether that's in their own families and that leadership piece that links into that or other community groups or, or sports, you know, it could be a raft of things. Um, and the third thing I would like to hope that happens is you know like when you're involved in a team and you don't see somebody for a long time and when you meet up with them again you can feel that connection and the relationship that you had maybe five or ten years ago that even though um it may have been hard but I think that's a positive if you can still um, have those connections with people, even though you haven't seen them for a long time. I think that's a real positive, not only for myself as an individual, uh, that individual that I would be talking to, but also the environment that was created, that it's left something, some somebody with a positive taint. 
um, on on helping them move forward, but we can reconnect and know that there is no bull in there, that there's pure honesty and that we could help each other if ever needed. And I think those three things I'd be happy with and, and all the people that I've dealt with. Um, I'll, I'll come away quite happy and, and content if that was the case. Nolene Todua, it's been great spending some time with you this morning. You've Thank given me a little perk of energy to go off and deal with the day. I wish you all the best for your continued success Thank as a you. coach, except for when you're playing Australia. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And it's all good. I, you know, um, if there is one thing that I've loved, my time over in Aussie, and I love watching Australia, I love watching New Zealand, and that's probably one thing that has taken, uh, that I've learned is the angst that I had prior to my time in Aussie is no longer. I have an appreciation for what Aussie do, how they do it, and, and, and the competitive nature that we have out there. So I take that as a positive, Paul. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nolan. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi, everyone. You have been listening to the great coach, Nolene Todua. I hope you enjoyed it and found a few things that you can bring to your own dinner table, locker room or boardroom table for discussion. When I listened back, some of the other things that really connected with me were the story she shares about joining the Sunshine Coast Lightning and how she handled her transition into that new team how she helps people evolve through the stages of their career and ensure they learn from the journey, not just the outcomes, and the role that reviewing performance and KPIs plays for her and how it shapes the focus of the team's resource allocation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And just before we go, if you have any feedback, then please let us know. Just like Shane A, who said, love it, so much simple and insightful insight from some wonderful guests. Thanks, Shane. The interaction with the people around the world who listen gives us great energy. And so if you have any feedback or comments, please let us know. And if they're positive ones, then please spread them amongst your friends and network as well. All the details on how to connect with us are in the show notes or on our website, thegreatcoachespodcast.com.